Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the first night of the 2022 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series. Every night this week there will be a new yarn dyeing video based on this year's theme, Painting Rainbows. And I am so excited for you to see all of the different sets we are going to create. Tonight I am going to do a project that has been on my list for a very long time. And we're going to take a look at the depth of shade of various neon fluorescent acid dyes to sort of see at which point the colors stop feeling neon. Depth of shade is the number of grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And so a higher depth of shade would give you a more concentrated color and a lighter depth of shade would be more pastel. But when you're looking at depth of shade, you are comparing one color to itself on the same yarn base. And we'll talk more about that during the video. Before I started mixing some 1% stock solutions, which have one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of liquid that I'm about to show you, I pre-soaked some 20 gram mini skeins of Wool to Dye Force Platinum Sock in some plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator, safety glasses, and gloves, and started measuring out my six neon rainbow colors, weighing out 2.5 grams of all of them except for the frozen blue, where I weighed out 5 grams because since this color isn't quite as potent necessarily as the rest, there's a chance we might want more of it. And I use it all the time, so having a larger stock is not a problem. I dissolved the dyes in some warm tap water and then brought the total volume up to 250 milliliters for five of the colors and then 500 milliliters for the frozen blue to give us our 1% stock solutions. That went pretty well overall, except I technically dissolved the fluorescent fuchsia in 275 milliliters instead of 250 milliliters. So it's a little bit less than a 1% stock solution. So two and a half grams of dye in 250 milliliters is a 1% stock solution. The two and a half grams of dye in 275 milliliters is a 0.91% stock solution. So it's about 10% off. I would have saved the dye and then gone and made a new 1% stock. However, a little bit of this dye goes a long way, so I will be using this stock probably for a really, really long time. And therefore, that's the reason why I don't want to mix up more. So I will either have to decide to just treat this as a 1% stock or adjust some of my numbers as I am planning things out. Today, we're going to dye 20 gram mini skeins. And if we wanted to do a 1% depth of shade, we would need 20 milliliters of a 1% stock solution to have an equivalent of one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. However, since these are fluorescent colors, I don't want to do a 1% depth of shade. I think for the darkest, we should start at a 0.5% depth of shade, which means that we only need 10 milliliters of that 1% stock to achieve that color. And then for each of the other samples, we would use half as much, bringing us to uh, 0.625 milliliters, which is hard to measure out reproducibly with the pipettes and syringes that I have at my disposal. I really miss some of my pipettes from my lab days because then doing small volumes would be no problem at all. So instead, we are gonna do some serial dilutions. So if we start with say 20 milliliters of dye in one cup of water, and then we take half a cup and put it into the next container, we'll be left with those 10 milliliters that we want. And similarly, at this point, we would have 10 milliliters, the equivalent of dye. Um, if we add more water, we'd have one cup here. And if we take half of that, then we would be adding, we'd have five milliliters. But once we remove half of that, that would give us the volume that we need. So this is an easy way that we can have each sample have half of the dye of the previous one, but we're only measuring out from our stock solution once. And we will end up with double uh, the amount of color we need for the very last sample, so we would just remove that and set it aside. Or another option would be to add a second skein of yarn and to have two uh, 20 gram mini skeins in that last sample to get that depth of shade. 
So with our pink, that is at a, about a 0.9% stock solution, so we have about 0.9 grams per 100 milliliters of liquid, we would need about 55 milliliters of this dye to dye 100 grams at a 0.5% depth of shade. This is a little bit more than the 50 milliliters we would need if we had that 1% stock solution. So therefore we need about 11 milliliters of this dye stock to dye our 20 grams at a 0.5% depth of shade. But instead of calculating and doing 11 milliliters, uh, five and a half milliliters, 2.75 milliliters, and like just calculating that further down, we can do the same thing where we start with, well, 22 milliliters in our first cup, and then do the serial dilutions, and so we will end up with the same concentration of dye, and this means that the only place I need to think about things differently is with that first cup, and so I think that is a very good thing. Now, the blue, I will see how it looks um, compared to the other colors. The blue, we may decide we want to be more pigmented compared to the rest, but we will set everything up and then see if we feel like we want more color on the blues. Because Frozen is more of a premix pastel and I generally find I need to use more of it to get a similar vibrancy when I'm dying by feel. I added one cup of plain tap water to six different takeout containers and then added 20 milliliters of each dye to one of the cups with the exception of our pink where I added 22 milliliters of our not quite 1% stock solution. To measure out the dye, I used a range of graduated syringes. Okay, here's just a little dip of the colors onto a paper towel. And I think I'm inclined to double the concentration of the blue to start with a 1% depth of shade. And as we add the yarn, if that 1% looks a little bit too deep, I can easily, with the serial dilutions, add a lighter shade at the bottom that isn't going to be uh, a challenge for me at all with the way that we have everything set up. So this will just give us more options to either remove the 1% at the end or to have it without having to reset up the first color. So I am just going to take another 20 milliliters of our frozen blue stock solution to intensify this color a bit. And I think that that will make it brighter in comparison to all the other colors. But now I am going to clean up these leftovers so we can start doing our cereal dilutions. I think to maximize organization, we're gonna do one color at a time. Uh, so our pink, we had the 20 milliliters, well, 22 milliliters in one cup of water. I'm gonna take half of the liquid, add it to a half cup of water, and then we're gonna stir it up. And now we're gonna take half of this, and add it to this new cup, and I'm mixing with the measuring cup just because the measuring cup's gonna be going in between each of them. And then we will continue. But I have been really, really curious for a very long time to know how much dye you need for it to still feel a little bit neon. But you can see we still have tons of color in our lightest shade. And then I'm gonna take just half of that and remove it. So now we have half a cup of water in each of our samples. And I do wanna add more water to them because I want a little more space for the yarn. So now I'm just gonna dilute everything with another half cup of water. I could have started with two cups of water in the first sample and removed a cup each time, but that would make these containers a little bit full. And so this is why I have opted to instead just add more water towards the end. Okay, and now we will add our yarn. There's no acid in any of our samples yet. These colors will take longer to absorb. 
I'm not, I'm not really expecting the colors to absorb if left at room temperature for a couple of days, but there's no harm in trying. No harm at all. And then I'm gonna wipe off this spoon first, starting with the lightest color. Just press the yarn in. I would say that our sample with the least amount of dye feels like a really lovely pastel pink. Um, as far as feeling neon, I definitely feel it here at the quarter percent depth of shade and absolutely feel it at the half percent. So I'm just curious how this will feel uh, once like all the color absorbs. But I now want to add acid and I'm figuring let's start high and go ahead and add one tablespoon of white vinegar to each of the samples. And again, I'm coming in and just stirring this up a little bit. I don't know how many containers I have. I may just save that last bit of pink to use for another little set, but this has been something that I have wanted to play with for a long time. And as excited as I am to see the rainbow panel of all the colors, I think that I'll do that uh, once maybe we've set the color and the color has absorbed. Again, it's a lot of very bright dye and I don't want to spill it. Uh, and so since the mixing is uh, like pouring the pots more, I also don't want to contaminate any of the colors by accidentally pouring something into them. So. I am going to set these pinks aside and then we'll set something up very, very similar or really the same for all the rest of the colors. I changed my mind a bit and decided to go ahead and do the blues next because I wanted to have six blue samples going from the same lowest depth of shade but starting with a 1% depth of shade just in case that 1% depth of shade of frozen blue goes with the rest of the neons better than the half percent. This gives a little bit more flexibility for this color. So the only difference here was that I had six samples with a seventh uh, bonus to set aside versus the five with a sixth bonus that we had done the last time. Bringing back over our lightest and deepest pink, I think that the 1% depth of shade may have been the right call. I mean, we'll have to wait for all the colors to absorb, but this is feeling like this has more punch because that color has punch. And really, I suppose either could be fine, but this, this one feels a little bit more pastel. Uh, so, you know, maybe we made the right call. I mean, I hope we made the right call. And now I'll cover these up, set them aside, and we'll carry on with the other colors. And now we are going to carry on and do our cereal dilutions for the remaining four colors. And the yarn that we're using today, I can't believe I haven't talked about that yet. The yarn is Wool to Dye 4's Platinum Sock. This fingering weight yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and is the same base that I use for all of my Hanukkah specials. The other thing that I do need to talk about is how we're going to heat set these, I think, 31, maybe even 37 samples of yarn. If the colors, because they're fluorescent, may not absorb to the yarn in this cold process type setup. So in a couple days when I check in, we might still see a lot of color in that liquid. And for that, I think that we can steam set the containers themselves to help process them a little bit faster than if I were to remove each of the samples, transfer them into glass jars, and try to do them in sets of five. All of the containers that I'm using are dedicated for dyeing yarn, and they are not used with food now. They are, however, recycled containers that I got from various takeout over the years. And so they started their lives holding hot soups and things like that. So I did an off-camera test with a container. I put a little bit of water in it and I steam set it in my steamer basket for a long period of time. And the lid maybe got a little bit wavy, but the container and lids, the lid stayed on, nothing popped because there's like a little vent hole in a lot of the lids. And so that worked well. So should we need to, this would take more time, but with pasta inserts, I could steam 
set the yarn in each of these individual containers. That's not my preference, but we could do that if we need to. However, I am curious to see whether these colors will set if we let them hang out at room temperature for a couple of days. I set these up around lunchtime on a Thursday, and I have a feeling that I will not be looking at these again until Monday morning. We have these leftovers, and I went back and forth, but you know what? We can have another pastel rainbow set, and that will be really pretty. I am very excited to see how these colors come together, even if, <laughs> even if we have to steam all the samples individually, that might be a little bit of a pain, but we should be able to get most of the colors to absorb at this depth of shade. Certainly the 0.25% should all be fine. Um, so fingers crossed there. But I think our pink and purple pop are fairly similar at this low depth of shade. But one of the things I'm hoping to do with the information from this video is play around with some color mixing. I think that that would be a lot of fun to start with our fluorescent lemon, fluorescent fuchsia, and frozen, and see how those colors that we mix compare to the three secondaries that we already have in the collection. But anyway, the purple could be more purpley, but I think overall, these all work pretty well together. And our purple samples are separated from the pink, so I should, when we come back in a couple days to look at them, be able to tell which ones are which pretty easily. So I will see you in a couple of days. So it is the next day. It hasn't even been 24 hours. And I checked in this morning and was surprised. So there's still a little bit of dye up around the lip where the yarn isn't in contact. But, I mean, this is the most saturated fluorescent fuchsia shade at the 0.5% depth of shade. And while we're up here, I may as well wipe that lip. But there's color in the water, not very much. And so I'm shook. <laughs> this is awesome. And I think I'm gonna set this back aside, but let's check in on the purple pop. This one I haven't checked in on yet. But once again, we have a little bit of dye at the lip, but there's some pink in the water, but most of it is in the yarn. This is cool. Ironically, the purple pop is almost looking, maybe because of the way that the blues struck and broke, it's almost looking like there was some navy in there. Interesting. So this is a good sign. Uh, I'm probably not gonna be taking things out to heat set today, but this is making me more optimistic for when I take a closer look at everything, uh, probably Monday morning. Today is Friday morning. It is now Sunday night and we have all of our main samples with the bonus blue ready to look at. And I am going to go remove all of these lids. How pretty is this? Right now I have this arranged with our 0.5% depth of shade on top for all of these colors, but with the blue it's the 1%. And I want to quickly shift the blue and remove that deepest one aside and then shuffle these up to see how that feels. I mean, I think it kind of does work with the blue at the half percent depth of shade with all of the rest. Even though a lot of times the blue doesn't feel like nearly as potent as the other colors, part of that is because I think frozen blue strikes pretty quickly overall. So if I'm doing speckles or any other kind of immersion technique, it doesn't spread out. And so therefore you don't feel it making as much of an impact on the overall color. And I've also realized that maybe I should use a blue that I know bleeds more than frozen, like say turquoise, uh, in the future to help uh, give a nice pop. But that is something that I will have to explore at a later date. Now we want to see how these colors have done. And huh, I mean, there is a hair of pink 
in there, but that pink feels like what I would probably see if I was looking at this uh, and doing something immersion. So I think we're probably pretty good to go ahead and start steam setting these colors. Let's quickly take a look at the Purple Pop as well. Purple Pop is sort of a notorious bleeder, but I believe that the pink that is the bleeder here is the same pink that's in Fluorescent Fuchsia. Uh, but I don't know how similar the proportions are. But the fact that these samples have all pretty much cleared, I mean, we'll check the other colors. The fact that the, all of these have pretty much cleared means that we have a good shot to play around with these neons using more cool vat techniques like this, followed by steam setting to just play around. And that is really, really exciting. Especially since one thing I want to do is some deliberate color mixing using our fluorescent fuchsia, fluorescent lemon, and I'd probably stick with frozen for doing like a triad color mixing. Uh, I think because that's sort of what I have mixed and what I have planned, I will use that for all the samples for, I guess, the time being. And I'm gonna pop this in a steamer basket for at least 30 minutes. But I think that we'll see what we think about the frozen at the end, if we would wanna do the mixing with that more concentrated than the yellow and the pink. But the balance may feel pretty good with the half percent depth of shade. And actually, I'm also not sure if I would go that concentrated looking at depths of shade. It's possible that I would do it the mixing at a quarter percent because I feel like this still feels quite neon and there's less risk of color bleeding at a lower depth of shade. We will evaluate all of these colors and the depth of shade that we may want to go with once the yarn is dry but I continued to remove the yarn from these containers and group all the depths of shade of one color with a removable nylon zip tie to go and steam set them on the stovetop for at least 30 minutes. And with the blues, I grouped all six of those minis together. In every color, especially the most saturated ones, there was a hint of some color left. But again, I was so super relieved because I expected that there would be a significant amount of color left versus a hint. And so this means that giving the yarn time to steam set on the stove will help the color set. And it just means that we have more ability to play around with these colors without being limited by only having a couple of pots on hand. And the yarn's gonna heat in our steamer baskets for at least 30 minutes so that way we have that heat to really really set the color here are the bonus little pastels and I have to say I'm super curious to see how these are gonna feel once they're dry clearly there is more than a whisper of color in each of them but they also certainly don't feel neon anymore either uh, but it's just showing that these dyes go a really long way so I have a feeling those stocks that I made are going to last for a while. Uh, but anyway, I am going to go ahead and steam set this set of six once uh, one of my steamer baskets is free. But I have to say, I think that this whole set right here is really, really cute. Let's wash the yarn that is the most likely to bleed, and that would be our Purple Pop and Fluorescent Fuchsia. It's funny how much less bright the purple feels to me right now compared to, I guess, the way it feels sometimes on its own. Maybe it's the pink in it that ends up making it feel so bright. But yeah, I think that Pastel wise, I kind of wish that the pastel purples were a little bit, I don't know, more purple. I mean, right here, it looks very purple. Although I think I'm overexposed a bit. But I did just add some clear dish soap. And hallelujah, I'm not seeing any color come out. 
This is great. This is so great. Now granted, the highest depth of shade we have here is a half percent depth of shade. And so if we were going to see a lot of color come out, I think if we were at the 1%, we definitely would have. So this is great news. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and rinse the soap out of here and then wash the rest of the yarn off camera. If we do have any color bleeding, then I'll pop back in to show what it looks like. But otherwise, just hang up the yarn to dry. So that way we can see how bright these colors feel once the yarn is dry. When we are comparing different depths of shade in this video, we are comparing one dye, one color to itself on the same yarn base using different amounts of dye to see how those colors compare to one another. But comparing it on the same yarn base is key because if your yarn base has a natural color that isn't a bare white or maybe has a different fiber content, the final colors that you see may feel different even if they're at the same depth of shade. So I decided to illustrate this by dyeing two more yarn bases at the highest depth of shade that we used, 0.5% and the lowest depth of shade of 0.016%. The two yarn bases are Wolta Dye Force Diamond Sock and That Yak Sock. Diamond Sock is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Silk. And in general, silk blends need a bit more dye to have as vibrant of a color. Although this one may appear fairly similar, because it is starting off with a very similar bare white color and it's only 20% silk. The That Yak base is a natural, warm toned gray, cool toned brown, oatmeal y color. And this yarn is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon. And while it looks awesome with neon colors over it, it does have a darker color to begin with, so the colors are gonna feel a lot more muted when we see them later on. I figured that if I'm trying to figure out what depth of shade I need for a neon to feel neon, it's worth showing these colors on different yarn bases as well. Because again, with 100% silk certainly, and maybe even a wool silk blend, you may need more dye to have something that feels as bright. I set up my dye containers very similarly to before, but adding the dye directly to each sample instead of doing serial dilutions. So I added 10 milliliters of our 1% dye stock and 11 milliliters of our 0.9% dye stock to the containers to get the 0.5% depth of shade. And then I added 0.31 milliliters, very approximately, of our 1% stocks or 0.34 milliliters approximately of our 0.9% stock for the lightest colors. When measuring out tiny volumes like this, it is really hard to be accurate, which is why this isn't the way I did it for the other video. But since I wanted to quickly put these samples together, uh, I decided to do this versus doing some other dilutions. I added one tablespoon of white vinegar to each of the containers that started with one cup of water along with the yarn. I'm not sure if we will see much of anything on this set here of the That Yak because the color is so, so pale, but That Yak does look a lot darker and it's harder to see what's going on while it's wet. So who knows what we'll see once the yarn dries. But even now, this shows a clear example on how the difference of colors that you can perceive. Like these are all the same depth of shade and these are all the same depth of shade within those colors. And they look vastly different because of how the dye interacts with what it is we're dyeing. I let it sit for a couple of days and then steam set it for at least 30 minutes to finish setting the color. And then I washed everything off camera so we can now go look at the finished yarn. Now that they are dry, let's take a look at our neon depths of shade. And here are all the colors that we have mixed. I have it arranged right now, so we have the same depths of shade in every row, with the highest depth of shade for most of the colors at 0.5%, or half a gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, with our frozen blue 1% up near the top in its own row. I probably at some point should start thinking about using Caribbean blue 
as the neon blue. I haven't played with that color enough on its own. I keep using Frozen, but it's possible that the Caribbean blue might strike slower, and so there might be reasons that are advantageous to bring that into the rainbow. But for the purposes of this series, I'm using Frozen because that's what I've used before. Now, some things are immediately obvious to me. Uh, the purple pop over here turns way less purple as it gets pastel. Now granted, this pink is more purple than the pink of the fluorescent fuchsia, but the blue has less and less and less of an impact as the color gets lighter. Similarly, I would say the same thing with the blue is true if we look at our radioactive. By the time we get down to the pastel, the contrast between the yellow and green is really, really low. And I think that this is why sometimes in the past when I've been playing with these colors as pastels, it would feel like the green would disappear. And that's because it, its impact was so close to that of the yellow that I wouldn't feel the green as much in there. And so that I think is rather interesting because clearly when they're more concentrated, we have contrast up there. We have a beautiful rainbow set at the top and we have a beautiful rainbow set down in the pastels as well. It's just different. Now let's go ahead and shift our blues down one to see how we feel about those colors. And I would say that overall, the blues being more concentrated than the rest of the colors can work. It certainly works well next to the purple pop, which is also a little bit deeper, but I think it overwhelms, not overwhelms, but I think that the overall depth compared to the radioactive feels different. And you can see if I shift into monochrome, you can see that, well, the yellow is definitely lighter. Our radioactive is still pretty pastel. And so the jump with the 1% is more extreme than the jump with the half percent. And so depth and intensity of color wise, this might work better as a rainbow set than this, just because I feel like that blue feels a little bit too deep, even if this one is a little bit too pastel. And so I'm actually pretty surprised with the way I feel about this. So anyway, here is our grid. And we could go and take everything at a 1% depth of shade. It's just some of those are bleeders and make me a little too nervous to do that. But we did take a look at two other bases at both our highest and lowest depth of shade. And so let's take a closer look at that now. The Diamond Sock Blend saw a lot more transfer between the different colors than I've seen on our platinum base. And maybe it's because like these were all grouped together when we set it, but also maybe the silk content meant that the colors did not strike nearly as fast because yeah, there's just a lot more it's subtle, but transfer overall. There's also a little bit of transfer in the lighter shades as well. It's a bit of a bummer. I should have separated them for steaming. We have our platinum that we looked at before, the 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn on top with the diamond sock on the bottom. And diamond sock is 80% superwash merino, 20% silk. And for all we have the color transfer, which actually the little bits of neon transfer on this blue in particular are actually breathtaking. I wonder if I could do that on purpose. It does appear that the diamond sock maybe is a hair lighter, not quite as light as the quarter percent depth of shade, but something feels a hair less saturated, but the overall, the colors are fairly equivalent. Editing Rebecca note, I realized while editing, taking a look at my calculations, I measured out half the dye that I needed to for the palest depth of shade on the diamond sock and that yak. So some of my conclusions on the palest yarn needs to be taken with an extra grain of salt because I'm comparing it to something that has twice the amount of dye on the platinum sock. 
And so this accounts for any discrepancy. I'll try to label uh, the yarn with the correct depth of shade. And as I'm editing, I may pop back in. <laughs> However, when we bring our lightest depth of shade into the mix, and here we have our platinum and here our diamond, the diamond definitely feels paler than the platinum. And this is where I started talking about how, yeah, the, the diamond sock does feel considerably lighter at this paler shade when compared to the platinum sock. And if you think about it, that makes sense because I use less dye. <laughs> now, if I had them at the same depth of shade, might it have felt a hair lighter? Probably. I do think that it would have just based on what I've seen using this base more in the future, but it does absorb more color and is brighter overall than I think I originally hypothesized, which is really cool. I actually adore this diamond sock base and it's something I, it's something I want to play with a lot more in the future. When I bring in the That Yak, which is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon, clearly we have a difference in our depths of shade, uh, a difference in the way the colors appear, but that's because we started with a bare yarn base that was a very different color at the beginning. And so that shifted the color that we see here. Here, the difference between, I would say the pink and purple and the yellow and green are both really subtle, but you still feel the hue of each of the colors coming through. And now when we bring in the lightest depth of shade on the That Yak, I honestly am not confident that I even put the colors in the correct order. I could have flopped the pink and purple by accident, and the orange, yellow, and green are maybe in the right order, but also maybe not. It's really hard to say. The colors really did not make enough of an impact to see the pastel rainbow on this base, which isn't to say you couldn't do a pastel rainbow on this base. I think that you could get a more pastel rainbow, muted rainbow feel, but you need more dye than what we used. I mean, there's no question you could go lighter than the half percent that we have at the top, but I wouldn't necessarily do one sixteenth of that. That is too much. Interestingly though, having that little blue on here turn this into a beautiful cool toned gray. It sort of toned out the warmth that we had in the bare yarn and that's pretty cool, but otherwise, I think I need to dye all these colors again. As far as where do neon stop feeling neon? Certainly things feel neon at the half percent. And I think there's still an element of neon down here at a quarter. And then after that, as we go on, it starts to feel more pastel versus fluorescent. Of course, these colors are all fluorescent. Well, I mean, the blue isn't but the rest are. I can't really make this room very dark, but you can still see a glow when I shine my black light on. Even on the yak, you can see the brightness that we have, especially in those yellows, but even the pinks. It's really just the blues that are not fluorescent. And I'm really glad I discovered that we can still show that fluorescent pop, even with some natural light. It's not quite as dramatic as if I could get this room really dark, but I don't really have a good way of blocking the windows. I had so much fun looking at the different depths of shade of these neon fluorescent acid dyes. And I've already referred to this image to create a perfect color in a video that'll come out later this summer. So what did I do with the diamond sock and that yak sets that had some color transfer? Well, I have these quote imperfect sets right here, and I've actually just added them to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, along with those pastels that I over dyed for more saturated colors because we had color transfer on those as well. There are going to be a lot of race socks this week as new episodes of the Spring Mini Skein mini series come out. So it's worth, while you're watching, maybe taking a peek at the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop for yarn mops or maybe some sets because I dyed a lot more than I needed to fill the mystery SMSMS sets that I sent out uh, at the end of April. I am so excited to share more rainbow mini skein sets with you over the course of this week. There will be a new video coming out every night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and the episodes of Dye Pot Weekly that are coming out this week 
will also be part of our painting rainbows theme. So please make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the videos. If you love the content that I create, there are many ways that you can help support the content here. I do have a Patreon and my Etsy shop that I've mentioned, but newly available or very soon available, there will also be a channel membership and you'll see a little join button beneath the video and you can go and check that out for some fun badges and custom Chemnitz emotes uh, that you can use in live chats during premieres and live streams uh, on this channel. I don't know if you can hear the baby birds that are like right outside my window, but they're really loud right now. <laughs> With that little join button, there'll be a little video of me explaining the perks and how some of the perks may be the same as what I offer over on Patreon or complement what I offer over on Patreon. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I cannot wait for you to see what other rainbows I have created over the next few days. Thank you so much for watching.